I wasn't near enough clapping. That was really good. You know, I send to Kim what I'm going to preach about, and she digests it and thinks through it and comes out with all this amazing words and meaning and music. And she asked me what I think, and what I think is I'm just in awe. I don't need to comment about it. I've already worshiped, haven't you? So I can screw it up, and you're still okay. Because you know there is a way, and you are on that way, and life is good there. And love it. You know this already. All right. Lent is 40 days. Now, 40 is a biblical number. I used to teach biblical numerology. So here's a little bit of it. Anytime it's a four or a 40, it means you've gone too far to go back because seven is complete or perfect in the Bible, 12 is all you can handle. Like, you should never eat more than 12 donuts, it's all you can handle. <laughs> I mean, that's just, that's logic. I mean, think about it. But if seven is perfect, three and a half is halfway to seven. But if you get to four, you're over halfway there. Four, 40, 400, all those mean the journey, you're too far on to back up. So the 40 days of Lent, you're too far on toward the kingdom of heaven to back up now. And that starts this Wednesday. So as we look to prepare, what's fun is we're preparing for Lent, which is preparing. So we're preparing to prepare, which I do all the time. I'm the world's greatest procrastinator. I will prepare to get ready to fix and to get to straighten out to get ready to do. And then I'm tired. (laughs) Haven't done a thing. So as we prepare for preparing, as we prepare for Lent, the theme that we ought to hit, and I've hit this for most of the years of my ministry, is the way. Because that's one of Jesus' names. Did you know that one of Jesus' names is the way? In fact, at first, we weren't called Christians. The first people way back in history were called people of the way. Because Jesus said, I am am the way. I'm a bunch of other, th- I'm truth, I'm life, I'm light, I'm, I'm love, I'm glory, I'm forgiveness, I'm grace. I'm, this is who I am. As we look at that, we see John the Baptist in the beginning of Mark. Now, Matthew is very wordy. He talks a lot. Yeah. Luke is very f- physician-like. He jumps down into the detail. John wants you to remember stuff you forgot. Jesus is God. You know, remember Jesus is majestic. But Mark is just nitty-gritty. He's just down to it. So he begins with John the Baptist. First chapter of Mark, here's John the Baptist. And John the Baptist comes out of the wilderness, and the Scripture begins there. It is the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Now, this word voice, we think, means words. This word voice means tone. It is like the sound of one crying in the wilderness. Where is the wilderness? It's a place where there is no road. The wilderness is where you get lost. The wilderness is where you don't find food. The wilderness is where you don't find water. So what is the voice of one crying in the wilderness? Hear that. What is the tone of your cry when you are lost? Woo! That's different, isn't it? What is the tone of your soul when you're in the wilderness and cannot find the way? Prepare the way of the Lord. So here's a person lost saying, I want the way. Make his path straight is an illusion that we don't get anymore because we have good roads, except in Pinellas County. We have, um, we're working on them. It seems like we're working on them forever, doesn't it? I went to the dump twice yesterday. I don't know if you've got a truck or go to the dump, but if you go to Pinellas County dump, they have been fixing to fix it forever. And in a truck with a bunch of stuff in the back, you're just feeling the road. Well, 
In Jesus' day, when Caesar or some king went on a road, there was a crew who went ahead of the road and fixed all the potholes. Isn't that fun? Every time the king went somewhere, you had to fix the road before the king rode on it. And everybody knew this, so when you heard this scripture, he's saying Jesus is king. He's saying, prepare the road because his majesty is coming to you. That's what John the Baptist, we don't get that because our roads are mostly fixed. And so we ride on them. I love the feel of a good, just fixed road. I'm a bicycler. I bicycle. I'm older, so I'm an electric bicycler. <laughs> don't make fun until you try it. People say it ain't work. Get out there. Show me ain't work when my sweat's all the way down to my backbone. <laughs> Prepare the way of the Lord. It's like that smooth, black, fresh asphalt that just feels so good when you ride on it. So where are you as we walk into Lent? Jesus said, I am the way. Well, what is the tone of your voice? What is the song of your soul? Because I want to invite you into a song of joy. And you may say, but Jack, I can't have joy. Because, well, let's talk about that. Jesus said, I am the way. This way of Jesus is what we follow to find a fulfilling life of joy and peace. And when we get off that way, we are lost. When we get off the way of Jesus, of having grace, having forgiveness, having love, not taking ourselves so seriously, not getting crazy. You know, I'm wearing this, so I got a quote of Taylor Swift's song. You need to calm down. <laughs> you, yeah, go look it up. It's a fun song. So, so we're off and our voice is crazy because we're in pain. Why? Why? Well, a lot of the whys, you look to Freud or Jung or Erickson or some of those people to dig deep in the human spirit. Jung was a big God believer. Carl Jung, uh, if you're reading, it's Jung, J-U-N-G. But when you say it, the J is Y-ish. So, Carl Jung said, the unconscious will, will just kill us. The unconscious will be drug around like a slave if we aren't conscious about our life. If we're not aware of our life. He said, you are like a fruit tree. God has made you to be what you are, not something else, not somebody else, not something else. You are what you are. So what do you find under an apple tree? You took a little while on that. <laughs> this might be a hard day. Let's, let's get, what do you find under a pear tree? Pear. Banana? Pear. All right, good, we're here. God has made you what you are, where you are, when you are. The journey isn't somewhere else because God is not somewhere else. Gott mit uns. God is with us. If you want to know where God is, be here now. That's what Jung was talking about. Unconscious thoughts are just going to kill you in crazy ways. Conscious thoughts are where you carry your life forward. Jesus Christ is calling you into right cheer, right now, right here, with who you're with, where who you are, who you are, with what you've got on you, because it's a journey and you're carrying it all. Now, let's talk about being lost. This voice crying in the wilderness. I have felt that. Haven't you felt that when you don't know where your life is going? When you think you should be somewhere else or somebody else or something else? I'm tired of the haters. I am tired of the haters. Quoting Taylor again, haters gonna hate. 
But I am, I am tired of the haters who just don't love people and think they're bad people. I don't like those kind of people. Those kind of people are bad. God didn't make junk. There are no bad kinds of people. God made beautiful people. And you're a beautiful thing just like you are. Jesus said, I am the way, and invites you out of that wilderness of I don't know who I am into the way of I know who I am. I know where I'm going. I know who's going with me. I don't know if you remember the old TV series, Kung Fu. Uh, David Carradine, Kung Fu. Bruce Lee was going to play it, but he died. And so Kung Fu, every episode, is Kung Fu being on a journey. And on a journey, he's not trying to find food and water and who can take care of him. He's looking for the oppressed. He's looking for the person who needs defending. He's looking for the person who needs help. Why? Because he gets it. Because the Shaolin Temple was a place where they studied, guess what? The way. The Tao. That's way in Chinese. Your way is in Jesus Christ. And your way is to be here now not be lost in the fantasy of where you're not. What am I talking about? Out here is the wilderness. If you hate who you are or who you're with or how you are or what you've got, if you're dissatisfied with where you are, I'm going to tell you something hard. But honestly, this is a good church. You're going to hear hard. If you're going to follow Jesus, you're going to hear hard. We aren't going to say, sweetie, how you doing? You okay? Need a crumpet? <laughs> We're going to tell you the hard truth. And the hard truth is if you're a hater and you hate yourself, it's going to be hard to save you. Thanks be to God who has given us a Savior in Jesus Christ who breaks through your self-hate and says, I love you. I love you. Love yourself. Abelard Dupree, 1160. God loves me so that I might love me. And loving who I am, I am able to love. That's a thousand years ago he was that wise. Christian priest. Who are you? What are you producing? Are you producing hate for who you are and what you are and where you are? Well, you're just going to get hate all over the ground. You're just going to brew sand spurs and weeds. And your life is going to suck and you're going to look at it going, I hate this. That's the wilderness. And your voice sounds sad there. Get out of there. Jesus has shown you the way. And the way is love. How's that work? First, love yourself. Well, I'm fat. Well, I'm fat. I look more like Jason Kelsey than Travis Kelsey. <laughs> it's an inside football joke. Jason Kelsey is kind of built like a grizzly bear. And he likes to show his naked belly. You're not going to get that. You're welcome. If you hate who you are, you're fighting against the way. You're fighting against Jesus. Beloved, 1 John 4, 7 and 8. Beloved, let us love one another. And I would add, and ourselves. For loves of God, everyone who loves is on this way, is of God and knows God. He or she who does not love, if you hate who you are, if you hate who you're with, if you hate your job, if you hate your life, you're walking out in the wilderness. He or she who does not love does not know God, for God is love. I invite you, as one crying with the voice of loving the way, to leave that wilderness of I'd rather be somebody else, I'd rather be with somebody else, I'd rather have somebody else's life, I'd, I'd rather have 
this or that or the other, which leads me to destination deception. Destination deception is one of the great ways to wander off into the wilderness. Destination deception says, I'll be happy when. I'm not happy now, but I'll be happy when. Saw my friend Dennis. It reminds me of Publix. There you go, Dennis. And I'm in Publix all the time. And I talk to a lot of very young people. And I'll say, how you doing? Now, I can't say what is the state of your soul because, A, it sounds a little weird. <laughs> I mean, let's face it. If I walked and said, what is the state of your soul? You'd say, have, have you got an hour? So I just say, how you doing? Which is Southern for what is the state of your soul? <laughs> and inevitably, I'll get the guy cutting meat or I'll get the person finding uh, rotten produce saying, well, I get off at five. Yeah. How are you doing? Well, I'm off at five. <laughs> and if you press it, it's I'll be happy then. No, you won't. Because if you ain't happy now, you won't be happy then, because you will bring you with you. <laughs> Your snarky little sad self will still be there when the bell rings and you get out of school. And what are you going to do then? What are you going to do then? Have you got a car? No. Have you got money? No. Have you got a girlfriend? No. What are you going to do? Go to mama's house and play video games? Yeah. You're going to be happy? No. Because I'm going to be thinking of all the things I could do if I had money or if I had a car or if I had a girlfriend or if I had a life. Well, y'all, that's the wilderness. Feel the room. Could hear a pin drop. You know why? Because this is icky stuff we're talking about. Right close to your bones. Who will deliver us from this body? Of death. Thanks be to God who has given us the victory in Christ Jesus our Lord. Because the road you're on, that's Jesus, loves you. Think about that. The journey you're on, the road you're on is Jesus. I am the way. And that road you're on, that journey you're on, loves you. Doesn't just want you to get to heaven, wants you to feel heaven all the way. And that comes from pouring out, not sucking in. Sucking in sucks. Pouring out is life. I'm going to preach a lot more on that next week. Put a pin in that. Not, not next week, next month. I preach about once a month. Whenever they want me. I'm kind of like the substitute teacher that, you know... <laughs> Jesus is calling you to be Kung Fu. To walk the journey that is going to take care of you. The road is going to take care of you because the road loves you. Now, you know when I walk down here what I'm going to do. Those of you who are new, I'll walk down here to challenge you, but also to tell the band it's time to get up. <laughs> so let me challenge you. The road you're on loves you and has put you to be with the people you're with. To do what? To free them from whatever hurts them. To love them in whatever loneliness they have. To pour out and be Christ to your husband, your wife, your kids, your neighbors. They may not love you. Well, show me an episode of Kung Fu where they loved him. He had to fight everybody. It isn't about you being loved. It's about you having love because Jesus loves you. The road you're on loves you. The road you're on is taking you to heaven. Nothing can get in that way. All you've got is water to pour out. All you've got is joy to give. This is who you are. Or if you're a peach tree, you got peaches. Hand them out. Hand them out. I'm going to pray for you. 
Lord, there are people in this room who feel the wilderness cry, and their voice has the sound of sadness from being off this road where they don't like who they are. They don't like who they're with. They don't like the life they have. Lord God, save them. Bring them to your way, to your love, to your life so that they might understand it is not in being loved, but in loving that we find ourselves. It is not in having, but in giving that we find our purpose. And it is joy to serve, joy to pour out, joy to live. Lord, bring the lost home in this room, in this moment, in the name of Jesus, amen. So how do you know you're in the wilderness? When your mind is saying, I hate this. Easy, it's a great signpost. How do you get back in Jesus? Say, I love this. But Jack, I hate this. Right, love it. But Jack, these children are driving me crazy. Yeah, they're little jerks. <laughs> love that little jerk but my husband's a jerk. Love that jerk. But my job is hell. Bring heaven and donuts into hell. You are not just on the road for Christ. You are the very presence of Christ. You walk in the room. Jesus walks in the room. You are power. You are life. You are light. You are not the victim here.